Hello and welcome to another episode of Midday Masterclass. It's an episode where we help youngsters interact with past masters on their game, on the mental side, physical side. Today, we have with us Dinesh Nanavati, an NCA coach and a former first class cricketer for Saurashtra who has played the Dudri Trophy for West Zone. Welcome to the program, Mr. Thank Nanavati. You. Thank you. Well, let me ask you of how you got, got into coaching because you're best known for your coaching now. During my last few years of playing time, uh, many times so many people told me that uh, why don't you start coaching, okay? But then I resisted for some reason or the other. But the main reason being, uh, I never wanted to start something which I don't know to in totality, okay? So I waited and an opportunity soon came my way when the Mumbai Cricket Association started level A course under the being the fac faculty being uh, Mr. Vasant, late Mr. Vasant Amladi, a great coach, okay? And uh, I stood first in that course and the journey started from there because I realized that if without getting that uh, sufficient technical knowledge, if I start coaching, I would, I would be teaching what I was good at while batting, okay? And I never wanted and I firmly believe that all the players are different. I cannot force them to play the way I was playing and because I was successful playing that kind of game. So I just uh, went through that course, became, uh, I stood first in the camp and that's the beginning and uh, the journey went on to NCA. I become level two, I appear for level two. Again, I stood first in level two all over the country and then there was level three. I stood third in that uh, examination. And uh, the journey is still continuing. I just yesterday received a uh, return back from Calcutta where I had a small camp plus a workshop for the coaches. I am still uh, very actively coaching. So that journey I think started somewhere in 1993-94 where most of the students probably were not even born. Okay. So 94, uh, the MCA took the examination, I stood first and 94-95 season I was offered the coaching of Mumbai under 19. The president then was Mr. Madhav Mantri. So this is how the journey towards the coaching started. And I'm still learning. Obviously the game has changed over the years, but how has coaching changed? There are two thoughts in my mind. One thought, me being the old timer tells me, you know, those things which I've learned and uh, I have practiced for all these years still holds good. But then there are new methods now. Now most of the thing is now power hitting. Everything uh, is related, related to power. Lot many people are practicing that also. They get uh, physically ready. They go to the gym. They spend a lot of time in the gym to become fit. And uh, they lot, spend a lot of time in the nets to develop certain strokes. And now you know the switch is hits or the reverse hits. Reverse sweeps are going sixers. So there is a change. But the basic will never change. Basics will remain what they were 200 years back. Okay? Like the way you hold the bat, the way you go forward, the way you go backward, the way you hold the ball as a bowler. Nobody still holds the ball all the time cross him. Cross. Sometimes they do if they want to bowl a bouncer. Okay? But that's only when the variations are co coming into the picture. But otherwise, the technique, pure technique still holds its ground and it will hold. But do you think cricket has become a more attractive game than, you know, the door batting which we saw in the 60s and 70s? If you, if you, if you look at it in terms of uh, hits to the boundary and over the boundaries, yes. Recently concluded test series against England, our home series, gave very good example of how a door cricket is looked at. Sometimes you go up after losing on the first innings, considering a lead of nearly 200 runs, the Indian team still bounced back and won the test series. So that kind of cricket, I think still is held in the highest esteem. That is, I think, uh, test cricket is always going to be the pinnacle of cricket. It's not going to change, even if T20 comes now, T10 has come. But still, the test cricket is the real thing. And everyone says that and every top cricketer believes in that. You were coached in an, era, in an era where you had to play along the ground. Yeah, you know, hitting above was a taboo. 
yeah so how do you see it i, today? I would i would i would narrate an interesting uh, phrase which i usually say to all my students when i take a class for uh, for national cricket academy i always tell them that in my time sunil gavaskar's era okay and much before that also first six batsmen if they hit the ball 6 inches above the ground they are not batsmen okay but now the first six batsmen if they don't hit the ball in the air they are not batters so this is the huge change complete reversal of batting uh, mindset but it's okay now the times have changed the boys this boys will have to live with that kind of batting i'll i'll say one more story when we deal with their questions because one of the questions i'll narrate that story but still classical batting is along the ground you it's not not that i'm saying that you don't have to hit the ball in the air no even test matches red ball cricket the players do hit the ball in the air but not that frequently right so according to me that classical test cricket is still a biggest attraction you would you will be surprised to know i very rarely see a uh, ipl match and in stadium never okay but uh, i do watch test matches because that is where as a player or as a coach you get to learn so many things in one session there are so many ups and downs sometimes that it entire cricket you can learn from one session and that is test cricket so you talk about uh, you know uh, attackers of the ball in your time who are the uh, people who hit above who went over the, the top the, the first thing comes to so first name comes to my mind i don't think uh, i i really don't know the name but he was sunil gavaskar's partner ramesh nagdev ramesh nagdev. nagdev yeah ramesh nagdev he was the one who was uh, really attacking then i think came ramnath parker and all those but uh, it's very difficult to uh, give more names because you can count them on your fingertips so in those days hitting in the air where was not uh, looked upon uh, very interestingly you know they were all outcasted as non batters then your they would say you don't have to open you go at number 7 or 8 and then you hit whatever you want to but your kharjimkana team had a lot of big hitters <laughs> kharjimkana team when i joined kharjimkana somewhere in uh, 77 79 or something i still can't remember exactly playing one uh, mahindra shield for catholic gymkana i was playing for mumbai university abdul ismail was playing for catholic gymkana and then he from there i went on to play for kharjim gana but uh, i think in earlier era probably yes divechas and all those people who were the bowlers basically yeah. were the big hitters but uh, salim durani should play durani yeah. oh, salim durani but he is now you can categorize him as an all rounder but uh, what an all rounder i have yet to see somebody like him how much of a difference has uh, good equipment made in the game oh huge huge because the quality of bats the bulge part the side edges and uh, the the leather quality of pads and batting gloves and wicket keeping gloves it's so, leather quality is so superb that a wicket keeping gloves you can buy today and start playing tomorrow it's that starts fitting snugly i remember in my era i was a wicket keeper so i used to buy a new pair of course i never used to buy in those days having a personal kit was not everyone's cup of tea okay so for uh, say for example my state bank i would go and buy a wicket keeping gloves best quality whatever was, was available you must be knowing the name of prabhu desai yeah okay we, we used to buy it from babu babu natkarni those keeping gloves used to take 2 to 3 months to break i had to tie it with a string put it under the coat some heavy weight these that but still it won't take the shape of the hand it used to take nearly 2 to 3 months for the gloves to take the shape of the hand nowadays i i see people uh, the wicket keepers walking between the overs with their hands straight just mark if you can their hands will be like this in our days the hands were always like this cup always cup all wicket keepers used to walk like this never like this so i don't know what that change is all about because the equipments are so good that they don't have to keep that already 
very very quickly the gloves take the shape of your palm so but huge difference in equipment huge huge difference and the main difference is of course you uh, is the helmet i played without helmet i played all my cricket in mumbai okay on top wicket no no not a single matting wicket in mumbai but when i went uh, when i played for saurashtra i gave trials on turf on on Astro, uh, i mean matting uh, matting wicket okay i had no clue how to bat i was batting as if i was batting on a turf but something click something click and uh, i played but it's very uh, tough change from turf to matting and for those people who have played all their cricket in matting to come and play on top it's not easy so that's the major change in domestic cricket now is it now yeah everyone is playing on top on top and good quality top i think the credit goes to bcci for insisting on and providing the infrastructural loans or whatever you call it i don't know so that's the part where we talked about uh, mr nanavati's career his playing days his views i would now like to invite him to speak uh, on batting for a few minutes all by himself just couple of things uh, i thought uh, i will talk to you before you start asking questions and i'm sure this few things which i am going to talk about is definitely going to be what is in your mind okay the first thing first how do you hold the bat means when we are holding the bat like this are both the hands applying same pressure on the handle or different okay so suppose if i am holding like bat like i have not yet picked up the bat okay what pressure the bottom end and the top end give on the handle equal so now question is why because i'll always ask why and you can also ask me why if i say something you can ask me why because unless any coach satisfies your why the coaching doesn't get completed you don't get the answer right okay so why do you think that the bottom end should be loose than the top end so now the bottom end dominates means the ball goes in the air right so has it stopped going in the air or it is still will all the time go in the air because when you are holding the bat both the hands needs to be equally firm okay it's only when you pick it up in a certain way the bottom end grip grip gets released from the palm at the top of your back swing the bottom end needs to be loose it's not loose but the bottom end grip release it's just the pen holder grip okay other things are just supporting the bat right so this is what is the biggest issue everywhere because if you hold the bottom end loose here when you pick it up the top end doesn't have enough strength to hold the weight of 1100 or 1150 or whatever gram right so what happens here the bottom end is firm and that is what you exactly don't want right so now please hold both the hands firmly and then pick it up the bat pick up the bat also is a question now how do you pick up the bat back lift jo bolte okay so i would suggest that the top end which is resting on the front thigh should di go diagonally upwards up to the back foot thigh somewhere at waist level or there about behind the box basically okay so if i pick up the bat at one go here okay and the face of the bat slightly open how many of you think that the face of the bat should be pointing to the cover point at the back lift not everyone right okay so it just slightly open okay but at one go right so this is number 2 number 3 and the most important thing is you all must be moving before the ball is released initial movement or trigger or whatever you call it i don't mind anyone doing it and if i also don't mind if anyone doesn't do it okay but i do mind if somebody is doing it and doing it wrongly then we need to correct it so then i ask three questions why why do you do initial movement it can be any any reason any reason okay but the main thing is the batter gets into a ready position so in other terms if i say half <coughs> your your balance body balance in stance should be the same as after initial movement because from neutral position you come to active neutral position balances cannot be different and if you become imbalance here which is static balance there is no way you can become balance in your stroke production which is dynamic balance okay moving back dynamic means moving the balance so ye bahut important cheez hai balance ka okay 
वेन कभी करते लोडिंग पोजिशन राइट ओके बट इफ यू आर मेकिंग टू देन द लोडिंग पोजिशन समटाइम्स और मोस्ट ऑफ द टाइम इट्स गोइंग हे वायर आई हैव सीन द ग्रेटेस्ट ऑफ बैटर्स एट एन सी ए सेंग समथिंग एंड इफ वी टेक अ वीडियो इट हैपन्स डिफरेंटली ओके एंड देन हाउ डिफरेंट एवरी वन मे बी डिफरेंट आई डोंट आई हैव नो ऑब्जेक्शन ओके बट इनिशियल मोमेंट्स आर ऑलवेज मिनिमल छोटी वाली on balls of the feet not heel toe not on toe but on balls of the feet and that is how you can regain your neutral balance now anyone now this forward press is with the help of the front knee okay now how much it goes forward is not constant it will vary with the speed of the bowler slow bowler it will be less fast bowler the more the knee front knee bends the more the front knee is weighted it will move less weighted leg doesn't move freely okay so it moves less so what happens your next step will be on toe right and you will be playing too far away from the body does that happen ah it will happen anybody who has got more weight on the front foot but still able to go forward well will always lift the leg and put forward and that takes lot of time there again he gets let the ball hits the bat rather than bat hitting the ball okay so initial moment is really good it's a really good power position for a batter now everyone does it the whole world does it very few don't do it okay but key is the correctness of it right so this things you all need to understand a bit another thing the stance misalignment of both the feet everyone is like that reason no reason because somebody in the tv is doing this so we do or any reason some coach is suggests this stance if you are getting out consistently to incoming deliveries they'll say your head is falling this that and all those things so open up so how many balls come in the good bowlers will bowl all the things here outside the off stump 90% of the ball so you have found a solution for 10% but you have become vulnerable to the 90% is that a good good mathematics no no it's not good okay we'll try and do something about that also in practical so thank you very much i hope this small talk has helped you hi sir i'm pranay kapadia sir you mentioned earlier about the importance of aligning our feet in the stance so my question is uh, why they need to be aligned in the stance okay the situation is if you have a misalignment like this okay uh, and then you have an initial moment the shoulder goes too far wide towards on side okay and then for this leg to come to the off stump or slightly outside the off stump line ball it's very difficult so ultimately you end up keeping your back front foot somewhere around off and middle and then you go play try to play away from the body where the body gets the ball gets nick and caught behind you'll get out most of the time behind the wicket and if it, even if you hit it with a bat properly the ball will roll towards backward point it will never go where you want it to go that's the reason okay lesser the distance easier to go outside the off stump because most of the balls are going to come in that area right hello sir myself shawn rodrix and my question to you is more about mental stuff than the technical it is the thing is during t20s and all we have a tendency to play the ball hit it instead of just watching the ball and play it accordingly so we get a tendency wherein we hit the ball very hard in which our eyesight and everything disturbs so how to deal with it so the issue is whether you play longer version or you play t20 idea is to watch the ball till the end okay but because the t20 is a real, little shorter format and uh, the number at which you go is say for example around 4 or 5 overs are remaining you don't have enough time to set your eyes in as usually it happens in a longer yeah. version game so you start hitting but it's not though even though it's a premeditated shots all the time you need to watch the ball little little uh, closely you just yes. can't uh, blind do blind hitting yes. sometimes you do get good results but more often than not it will not help you ideal ideal situation would be to tell yourself okay i've got this many balls my role role is this so i'll try and play at least two balls quietly and then i'll open yeah. up okay yeah. that one or two ball everyone needs to 
face properly and then you can launch into whatever you are asked to do or whatever is yeah. your role yeah. yeah okay yes uh also i would like to ask you've been into cricket for so many years and you've seen a lot of cricketers and i just want to know a mantra which you have which you have uh, gained through your experience which you would like to share because i am an old timer the mantra is for me and i've always said everywhere that the boys or the players or the coaches should try and keep their players as close to the technique as possible nobody is perfect even all those players who are playing at the highest level they all have some flaws or the other but they are mentally very strong and they are they know their game so very well that they will not play the shots where they are not comfortable yeah but we usually keep attacking everywhere but just play to your strength but try to remain as close to the technique as possible correct tech thank you sir hello sir i am yash jadav uh, my question is uh, being a wicket keeper i face difficulty uh, difficulty to take catches towards leg leg side to both spinners and pace bowler so please guide catches or collecting the ball catches collecting the ball also yes sometimes so unless you collect you can't catch this one issue is problematic for everyone okay yeah. but you have to overcome that now how you how do you overcome one is you have to have a quick footwork yeah okay one that's one that's main essentially main essential for a good wicket keeper yeah. good footwork another th- another thing you can uh, do some drills basically why a wicket keeper not able to go on the leg side and collect the ball as efficiently as off side is because there is a batsman in between ah, right yes. so you need to find an obstacle in between which will blind your view yes, for a fraction of a second and then you have to anticipate okay. so how do you create that you put a chair here and ask yes. your coach to pass the ball underneath yes and then you move okay sir and collect the ball okay sir initially little away from you as your skill level increases get this thing closer closer and closer so you get less time to time. move so you move much quicker yes right yes so that is the drill which will help you become better on the leg side thank you sir thank you sir my name is atarva mayura my question is uh, while playing on drive my head falls down so what should i do to avoid it a good question i was waiting waiting and waiting for this type of a question to come forward right i think uh, everyone needs to be here how do you know that your head falls sometimes it didn't connect properly so that means your head falls right yes if there is a issue of head fall it will be more apparent on the off side than the on side okay so it's not like that the head falls only on the off side and not on the on side or only on the on side not on the off. now there is an issue now there is a small technique i i would like to explain when you play an on drive the ball is a fuller length ball yes right somewhere around leg yes. and middle and you end up playing a flick shot practically all of you right now when you are playing an on drive you dip your shoulder yes immediately as soon as you see that the ball is near to much fuller you dip your shoulder with the result that the front foot gets weighted with the result that it will not move forward much and that's what you don't want right yes so let it be like that once you do this you get a full view of the ball your head is down right and then try and play the ball here the key is the shoulder moves vertically upwards and the hips move horizontally across if your shoulder and hip both the things move in one plane then you end up playing across and you feel that your head has fallen no yes. head doesn't fall on playing on drive head fall hona hai to idhar hi ho jayega so you drop this shoulder hit the ball straight hips turn horizontal plane vertical shoulder moves vertical if i do it this way i'll never be able to play i'll play straight mid on okay so that this is the way everyone probably does this yes. uh, with the result the bat comes close and the ball is hit much squarer than the straighter okay yes thank you sir. got it my name is samyak milan gadeire as being a lefty batsman i uh, get problem to face uh, off spinner so how can we play to off spinner like uh, we i specially play at azad and cross so their uh, wickets are slow and turning wickets so what are the areas where we can score runs this balls going away yeah is problem for everyone 
राइट एंड बैट्समैन लेफ्ट आर्म स्पिनर इज अ प्रॉब्लम आउट स्विंग इज अ प्रॉब्लम लेफ्ट एंड बैट्समैन इन स्विंग इज अ प्रॉब्लम ऑफ स्पिनर इज अ प्रॉब्लम राइट यू नीड टू बी एज क्लोज टू द पिच ऑफ द बॉल एज पॉसिबल बेजिक बिगेस्ट पॉइंट बेजिक पॉइंट राइट नाउ which are the areas where you play more shots you once it's turning you can't play big shots big drives okay try and play it with soft ends and wait for the loose balls which are the balls which you can score runs off short going away cut short pull these are the two shots which you can play very efficiently and unfortunately we try and play big drives and get caught at the covers spot in the slips and all those areas so th- those areas you just try and play singles and uh, other areas wait for the loose ball because as a bowler once they see it's turning big they'll start shifting the line yeah okay and there you have a chance anything on the leg stump can sweep. sweep it so sweep square cut these are the two main paying shots for against the spinner on a dirty turner turning track and i also played on azad all my cricket azad crowd <laughs> I have not played on Lords, okay? <laughs> so I know what wickets are. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, myself, Pratham Mure, and my uh, as a leg spinner, my question is how to set a batsman. When you are trying to set a batsman, you can't have five balls different, yeah. okay? You have to have one consistent line, mm. one consistent length, okay? Yeah. Suppose if you are setting up a batsman bowling outside the off stump all the time, making him play. But the biggest or the most important point for a spinner is. always keep the batsman on the front foot never allow him to go back and cut okay so just keep making him play somewhere here on the off side and then all of a sudden in the second or third over you bowl a googly yeah this is how you set a batsman yes. or you bowl straight straight let him realize that you are not going to spin the ball and turn the ball you don't show all your skills at a time to the batter okay hmm. thank you sir myself prasun singh and i am right hand half spinner uh my question is how to read batsman mindset while bowling okay <clears throat> do you think anyone can read somebody else's mindset it's very no. difficult yes very difficult so as a bowler you have to control what is in your control Con- try and control controllables don't try to control uncontrollables batsman is not in your control right yes you can rely on your technique yes your abilities yes. your skill set right uh just small idea you can get from the batter's movements whether he is uh, quick on the feet or whether he tends to hang back and play more on the back foot or whether he sweeps more yes and then devise your plan accordingly but i would suggest that you follow your strength yes. control your controllables okay okay sir hi sir my name is aditya giri Yeah, so good. I wanted to know about your views on modern day approach to batting. Modern day approach to batting, I think we discussed it little bit there. Since you are playing in an era where it's only power, 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 and power, right? So whether we like it or not, the game has shifted more towards power game. So now those people accumulators have no no role mostly, only as far as test is test is concerned, probably yes. But otherwise, it's all power. now when you are talking about power it doesn't mean blind hitting i for one is a firm believer that modern day cricket that is one day or t20 one day still little longer compared to t20 but t20 is basically premeditated shots okay you have decided that i'm going going to hit this bowler here here or here and you take the ball, uh, position before the ball is released accordingly so it all depends on how you practice now you if you want to hit play a power game you need to practice in the nets accordingly you need to find an area where you are strong or you can convert into big shots and now most of the time these people practice more on the open ground so that they come to know about the angle at which the ball comes delivered and then it goes straight or or comes in or whatever and they try and select the areas and practice accordingly okay so you have to practice that whatever you want to do in the middle mm. you better practice it in the nets whether you want to stay on the wicket stay here or okay don't hit here and then try to stay there so that's the modern day game is all about thank you sir that brings us to an end to another episode of midday masterclass thank you so much mr ranavati for coming and sharing your views My and pleasure. sharing your 
great inputs with us until next time goodbye thank you subscribe to midday india get direct notifications on all our videos by clicking on the bell icon